Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So we're coming to the end of the gardening season and it's time to start looking at tidying up some of the beds for the winter. Now one of the things you could do with a bed like this is if you wanted to, just to leave it over winter, you could just leave everything as it is and just let it rot down over the course of winter, let the winter frost and the winter rains and everything co come in and kill the, kill the plants and, and they'll slowly degrade into the soil by the weather of the winter and they'll increase that fertility naturally so you won't have to do anything to this bed but it can be a little bit unsightly if you're limited on space like me I want to use this bed for planting my garlic in um, it's one of my few beds that hasn't had any signs of white rot so I'm going to plant garlic into this bed uh, and see how I get on with growing garlic here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start clearing this bed up um, we've been hit by blight so, so our tomato plants we're going to pick as many green tomatoes as we can today. We've managed to last quite a while before we've been hit by a blight, but we're going to pull out everything else. So I'll start by pulling these sorts of things out. There's a few stray sweet corn left. I don't think they're going to be very good because the, the sweet corn has been okay this year. We've had, we've had a decent crop, but these are the last ones that weren't very good in the first place. So what I'm doing with these corn plants is I'm just putting them off at the base. Whenever you pull out plants like this, one of the good things to do is to always cut them off just as close to soil level as possible. And then that way, whatever's left in the ground will break down in the soil and feed the soil. So I'll show you how I'm cutting these down. I mean, these are weeds. These are perennial weeds, so I'll pull them out. Get down to as close to soil level as you can and just snip them out and leave that in the ground that will break down in the soil and continue feeding the soil and the, the same thing I'm going to do with these squash plants just pull them out at soil level if you wanted to you could just leave them you know cut, cut them down to the ground and use them to mulch your beds and that'll be perfectly fine if you wanted to do that it's a way of it's a way of feeding your plant beds and that's perfectly fine not a problem at all so i'm just going to pull carry on doing this And anything that I pull off here, it's going straight on my compost pile. One of the things that I have got in this bed as well is a lot of stray potato plants that popped up. So, uh, that popped up by themselves. And I'm going to get harvesting them as well, so you, we'll, we'll pull those up and see what we get, what kind of crop we get for free without having to do any work for them. Those bean plants are looking, starting to look a bit week now the weather's starting to turn cold but they're still producing so I'm not going to touch them I'm just going to leave them as they are until until the weather kills them as you can see there's still flowers on those plants so I'm not going to touch those until the very last minute once the weather's destroyed them then I'll take the plants out so all the squash plants that I pulled out there I'm just going to take them as they are and I'm going to dump them on the compost pile so all these sweet corn plants I'll pile them up and what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to run them through the shredder before I use them either as a mulch in themselves or I'm going to use them straight and put them, add them to the compost pile uh, because they're quite tough and they take you a lot of time to break down. So now that I've got this bed pretty much cleared, let's get these potato plants out and see what we can find for free. I mean I didn't plant these potatoes, they're just, they're, they're completely volunteer plants. So let's get them out. They've been hit by blight, you can see that. So let's start here, let's get this one first. This one there, I don't know. Let's see what we, oh there's a nice one. Wow. Wow, there's some good potatoes here actually. I saw this one come up and I did earth it up. But there's some lovely potatoes here. That. Look at 
that's not bad at all for free. <laughs> There's an interesting weed here as well, and this one's called Lamb's Quarter. Uh, it's an edible weed, so you can actually use the, eat this. So in Bangla they refer to this plant as Battu, so you can actually eat this. Um, it, it is an edible weed. Let's see what, what we've got here. There's, I mean, th these have gone a little bit green because they were up close to the surface. But look at that. They've not done bad at all. If, wow. <laughs> Three potatoes, anyone? I mean, I haven't planted potatoes here. Um, for a good few years. I planted the potatoes here about four or five years ago. At that point when I planted the potatoes here I planted them in trenches not in the technique that I use with wood chips and every year since I've had volunteer potatoes here. Oh but this is one of the problems that you do get with the, this kind of potato when you grow potatoes like this is in the soil is they do get quite sluggy so that's it's a nice impressive potato but it's been slugged. See that one as well so we'll cut the bad bits away and use the good bits, see what we can rescue from that. That is one of the biggest problems with growing potatoes in, in open ground, is that you do end up with sluggy potatoes. Um, they do get attacked by wireworm, they do get attacked by uh, slugs, and that's why I, I like to use the technique with wood chips. With these dandelions I am just going to dig these out because you don't, you don't want that when you pull these plants out you're going to pull out all the root whatever root you leave in that's just going to sprout up a new plant so it's always good to dig these out I've got a tomato plant here with blight on it so those tomato, that bunch of tomatoes looks okay so I'll have them that bunch there's one that's blighted we'll take that one there's nothing wrong with composting blighted potato plants one of the things to do with them is when you put them on your compost piles make sure you cover them up um, straight away so they so they don't blow this continue blowing the spores everywhere that's why they advise you to burn them so you don't spread it um, but blight won't survive on dead matter it, it needs live matter to survive on so now I've got all these weeds out all of this stuff is going straight onto the compost pile it's important when you're over in winter in gar garden beds is to dig out these perennial weeds because if you leave them in they're just going to grow back and they'll grow back stronger because if you feed the gar if you feed the bed over winter remember these weeds are designed to compete with your vegetables so these will always out compete your vegetables and they'll get to that goodness from the soil a lot faster than your veg will so always dig out these got these uh, perennial weeds that are causing nuisances so you can shred this up and if you shred this up, it'll compost down a lot faster. During winter, I don't aim to go for fast composting or hot composting. I just leave it and let it break down over the course of winter. It'll heat up and it'll start breaking down, that's fine. Because of the weather, will be on our side as well. It'll freeze and it'll thaw out and that'll help us out as well. So um, it'll naturally break down quite easily over winter like that. So I'm not worried about shredding it and breaking it up, which I would be if I was trying to produce compost with it really quickly. So now that I've got it pretty much cleaned up, just give it a rake and pick up any of these loose weeds that we've already dug out, get rid of them and just give it a rake over in case you've missed any, anything. If you are someone that digs, then now would be a good time to give it a dig over and get ready. But we try to dig as little as possible here. So uh, I'm not going to dig it, I'm just going to give it a rake over. See, there's a bit of couch grass there, so let's get that couch grass out as well. You can see how deep the root of the couch grass is, so let's get that onto the compost pile and that'll break down as well, that's fine. I'm just taking out these last bits of couch grass that are creeping in from the side, so let's get those out. And there's one more perennial weed there, I think that's cold. Now you've got a number of options of how, what you can do to leave this bed uh, over winter 
to keep it for, keep it protected, keep it weed free. So when you start back in the spring, it's ready for you to hit the ground running. Now the first thing that I'd recommend with doing with a bed like this to overwinter it is get a layer of manure on it, get a layer of compost, get a layer of some kind of mulch that's going to cover the soil, protect it, and it's going to feed the soil over winter. And when you start back in the spring, you're going to start back with a fertile bed that's weed free. If you don't have access to uh, uh, manure, another thing that you could do is use something like a weed suppressor membrane. Now I'm not an advocate of plastic, but if, if that's what you've got to hand, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with using a weed suppressant membrane. You can, you can buy that in, in rolls, or you can use old carpet. I mean, I know quite a few people don't like old carpet because uh, of some of the chemicals that are in there, but it's a good weed suppressant. Another issue with old carpet is that on some allotment sites they don't actually like you using it and they don't allow it. So that's one thing that you've got to bear in mind. The most important thing is to get this ground covered. Now I'm going to do a separate video that's going to be a follow up video to this on how you can cover the ground and increase soil fertility. Uh, so keep an eye out for that video, it will be released very shortly. And the last thing that you can do is if you've got access to absolutely nothing else, all you have access to is cardboard. You just get layers and layers of cardboard onto here. And that's what I'm going to do with this. I mean, that's, that's one of the things you could do with this, is just get layers and layers of cardboard on. I mean, the cardboard doesn't need to be in the best of shape. This has just been left out in the garden and it's in a bit of a poor state. Worm, but there's worms already and creepy crawlies already feeding into it. Now, I'd double layer this, triple layer this, um, and get it covered, and that'll protect your soil over the winter. And one thing that's often neglected is the use of cover crops. Now is the perfect time to get cover crops in as well. But we're not going to be using cardboard here because what we're going to do with this is we're going to get planting straight into this pretty sharpish. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of inches of this really nice nutritious compost and I'm going to completely mulch this bed get this bed covered with all this compost and then I'm going to get my garlic planted into here and the compost is going to break down over the course of winter feed my garlic and it'll keep the bed protected as well so if you're not going to plant into the beds get the soil covered what use whatever you can whether it's mulch whether it's cardboard whether it's carpet whether it's membrane Whatever you can, just use something to get the soil covered. Don't leave it exposed. If you don't want to do any extra work, just leave the plants where they are. They'll break down over winter, they'll feed the soil, they'll go back into the natural cycle of things, and come next spring, your soil will be healthier for it. But I want to use this bed, and I want to get planting. So I don't want this season to end. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.